Bionicles. They probably have like some modern Bionicles that suck ass. They like shoot little foam balls yeah. out. Like the old ones, you'd shoot like plastic darts that would actually imp- mine, like, pierce your skin. Mine actually shot nine millimeter rounds, which is great. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, Jeez. yeah my, <laughs> my dad gave me a secondhand Bionicle. He just duct taped his gun to it. <laughs> I was just walking around shooting shit. What's going on, everybody? This is the way. And here we are with chapter 14 of The Mandalorian, The Tragedy. Uh, Man, dude, they're just dropping bombs on us this season. It seems like every episode now is going to be pretty hard-hitting, pretty intense. Uh, I'm excited to talk to you about this one, Chris, because I feel like we're going to have some differing opinions on this, maybe. The biggest one being I didn't... I'm over here. (laughs) You're somewhere back. God, dude, he's gotten huge. Yeah, dude, he's big. He's gotten huge. Oh my God! He looks like a little, uh, like a little German Shepherd, man. He's freaking giant. Um, so the main one being, I honestly, and here we go. We can start this thing off maybe on the wrong foot. I didn't like this episode all that much. I'm dude. leaving. <laughs> I'm out. The podcast is done. I didn't like this episode all that much. So real quick, before we get too too in deep into this, um, this is your spoiler warning. If you've not seen the Mandalorian chapter Smart. 14, I was literally about the, to spoil uh, shit. The tra- Right. The tragedy. Um, this is your final spoiler warning. We, of course, do full reviews every single time. So if you haven't seen it, click off of this. Excuse me. Go watch it and then come on back. All right. Now that they've been warned, Chris, let's jump into this, man. What do you think of this episode? Um, initial reaction. So I actually agree with you. I didn't really enjoy the episode all that much. But what I did enjoy Ooh. was seeing our, our, our boy back. Um, seeing Boba Fett back and not just seeing him back, but seeing him in the armor and, and seeing him OG fighting. And the OG actor. Yes, yes, the OG actor. Yeah. He's looking a little rough, but yeah. Um, um I I have to say, fair. just from a, a, can you confirm? You have your computer there. I do. Yep, can you confirm ahead. where the actor that plays him is from? Tomorrow. New Zealand. New Zealand. Yep, New Zealand. So he's a Kiwi. Very good. I have to say that I really dig that his whole look for this like kind of revitalized Boba Fett kind of pulled a little bit on like some uh, on some uh, Kiwi like designs a little bit like it just felt kind of uh, like islander-esque you know like with like the flowiness and it was just it was nice it was it was like a nice uh i i have a feeling that like they asked him to be a part of this and he said okay but i want a little bit of my culture to reflect in this i want i want the character to feel a little more cultured um yeah maybe i didn't really know i didn't pick up on that but now that you say it i I get where you're going and like the the stick that he had i bet you that's something that's probably part of their culture i'm not sure I'm that completely was, speculating. That was here. crazy. That was crazy watching him just bashing <clears throat> Dude, through stormtrooper armor, literally breaking the the plastic. I, I I've read the books and I can't remember what they call it, but it's like a it's like a special like plastic alloy. I don't think it can be an alloy. Right. I think alloy has to be metal, <laughs> but whatever. Uh, um, it's just crazy to see him like literally cave in a stormtrooper's helmet dude not even yeah. like blasters shattering dude. their helmets mm-hmm. um so the second i saw the slave one yep i didn't know where it was gonna go i had a feeling that obviously boba fett and and din jarn were not going to like kill each other mm-hmm. i didn't i didn't think they were gonna go there but i didn't really know what was happening it, that's such an iconic ship yeah, that's is. that's probably right up there behind uh like the millennium falcon for for the big star wars fans mm-hmm. i feel like the slave one is is it was pretty much right up at the top. It was great because Miranda and I were watching it and like I I think I was like eating or something like I, I was like, you know, like like this and the TV's right there. And she goes, oh, there's a ship. And I went, oh, what? And I looked up and I went, oh, that's not just a ship, yeah. man. It's like that yeah. is not just a ship. Well, and we'd seen, so in the very first episode of this season, you kind of get a glimpse of Boba Fett on that first planet they go to with the the dragon, yes. the whatever, crate. crate Dragon, where the crate Dragon is. You get a glimpse of him at the end. And a lot of people had said that that was totally him. And, you know, it made sense because they found yeah, his armor there Yeah, even you said it, and I was like, no, there's no way that's him. It's weird because we saw his face before. Yeah, you totally did. And you totally I, did. Ne- I didn't make the connection because he just doesn't look the same. Like I right. saw him and I was like, that's, there's like, no, that's not him. That's not, that's, <laughs> it literally was him. So it was just bizarre that I yeah. didn't make the connection. Um, it just goes to show you sometimes you need to watch things more than once. Um, the things, um, the things that I, I, the big reveal of having Boba Fett in this episode was awesome. Mm-hmm. No doubt. Um, unfortunately that's pretty much where it ends for me as what I, as far as what I enjoyed about this episode, I was not, 
I just well, couldn't really get into this one as much. Yes, it was dope to see the Slave 1 and then see Boba. That was cool. But that, you know, after the two or three minutes or whatever, we were kind of over that. Uh, it The whole thing felt like it, it took place in, like, you know, one, one spot. Yeah. Like, the whole thing was just on this ruin on a hill, which looked... It didn't look... They didn't make it look fantasy enough. That it didn't look is exactly cool what I was going to say. Like, it's different when you have, like, Luke Skywalker on this temple out in the middle of the ocean and you see Rey kind of climbing the steps. Right. Different because it, it felt like it was removed. But this yeah, felt like it was... almost, like, otherworldly. Exactly. This felt like they did it, like, out in Arizona or something yeah. like that. And I don't, know, yeah. I don't know about you, but something about it being in the middle of the day at, like, high noon kind of ruined it for me. I feel like a sunset would have it's been a little nicer. No. Completely agree. I, I felt the, the like, scenery reference? of this one was... Com- yeah, that was uh, that was uh, Overwatch. Funny story, that was the voice of McCree, who was voiced by Matt Mercer. Mm-hmm. Who That's what I, I was literally well. about to say that. So. Uh-huh. D&D fans out there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like the whole setting of this one was wrong. It didn't feel yeah, Star agreed. Wars-y. It was like, why, why are we in the desert? Like, why are we clearly just on a rock somewhere in, in Arizona? And this temple, this this ancient Jedi temple that they, this big deal that they're going to take Grogu to and sit him on, pretty underwhelming, man. I, a, a I little did rock like... dome with some... I liked the when it activated. I thought that was cool. When yeah. I was like, yeah, oh shit, was. like this is like shit's happening. Like I was like, this is cool. Like things are happening. But and I, I like the But it was the, I was expecting more of like a uh and, and you're the Lord of the Rings expert, so help me out here. Minas what's the like evil city oh, where the uh, big Minas light Ithel. Well, uh Minas Morgul now. It was taken over and then Minas Morgul. I was expecting something more dramatic, like, I guess. You know, like it was, yeah, it was cool. But I was expecting, like you said, maybe it's nighttime. Maybe this planet is kind of eerie and it's yeah. it's not just in the desert somewhere. And like you said, he's up there for a while and he can't figure it out. And all of a sudden when he does, they turn back and it's some massive force energy thing, which the force part of it was pretty cool. Yeah. But dude, I, the, the scenery totally pulled me out Agreed. of this. I feel like they could have taken it just a step further and heightened the stakes a little bit. I, I really did enjoy the, the, the tension that they created in, like, like holy crap, they're under attack, and he can't get this kid out of there. Like, I, I enjoyed that. Um, what I didn't like were these Iron Man wannabe... So stupid. Yeah, so stupid. I don't know what dude. those were, um, but... They had, like, fucking bionicles come down off of that ship and, and grab that kid You're right. And that is, and that's what they looked like, too. It was, it was fucking bionicles. Um, dude, it which, was like, by the way, I love we, bionicles. Yeah. Um, <laughs> dude, same, same. Oh, I'm trying to remember like the, the, what it was called, the, like different color bionicles. And there was like a series, whatever. Yeah. We're not going to talk about bionicles. And they had like the jungle um, ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Our yeah, review on it on critic and the common man today, of bionicles, <laughs> the movie. You think you can still buy Bionicles anywhere? I'm sure you can. <laughs> I love they how we have, keep like, saying we're not ones. gonna do this and we just keep the Bionicles. They probably have like some modern Bionicles that suck ass. They like shoot little foam balls yeah. out. Like the old ones you'd shoot like plastic darts that would actually imp- mine, like, pierce your skin. Mine actually shot nine millimeter rounds, which is great. Oh yeah. Jesus. Yeah, my <laughs> my dad gave me a secondhand bionicle. He just duct taped his gun to it. <laughs> I was just walking around shooting shit. Um yeah, the the what are they called? Like dark Troopers or Dark what, troopers, what do yeah. they call them? That's what those were. Yeah, I wasn't into them. No, I, I thought they were way too Iron Man esque. It, it felt and and Miranda and I were talking about this too. I Moff Gideon is an interesting character because his actor, the guy who plays him, is a phenomenal right. actor. He is literally a phenomenal actor. He is incredible uh, in in Breaking Bad. He is an amazing, amazing bad guy in that movie. And he just the presence that he demands in Breaking Bad is it's phenomenal he's 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 great i do not like him in this show he doesn't feel like mm. star wars to me and neither does um uh oh god i can never remember her name i always butcher her name uh but the girl who plays uh the one who was with boba fett she's the original mulan um oh yeah um, yeah yeah i don't there's something about him and her that don't feel present in the world for star wars for me um why do you think that is do you think it's like their their i almost feel like it's their i think it's their accent i think it's that they're talking like yeah i was gonna say it's yeah it's like it's almost like you expect 
they're too similar. They're too familiar. Like yeah. they feel too, they feel too worldly. Mm-hmm. And it, that was the problem with this episode too. It's like the whole thing feels too much like it's just on a desert. Yep. And that's what that that that's what, or it's just you know out in Arizona. What is it? Or was it a but, desert? I don't. For some reason, I'm picturing like a lush green. No, no, it, it wasn't a desert. It was kind of in between. It was like that lowland, like okay. shrubbery kind of like real. I remember dry there being rocks, rush yeah. kind of thing. I, yeah, and rocks. I don't know that I would call it a desert, but it was definitely kind of dry. Because, um, you know, the stones were all dry. That's right. That's right. Stuff. I do but, remember. I remember that. Dude, it's hard. It, it's hard to go from playing like the Force Unleashed or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, or was it the Force uh, Awakens? What was the most? Fallen Order. Fallen Order. What am I talking about? Fallen Order. It's hard Those to go from playing. Too, um, yeah, it's hard. I, I never beat it. I played like a like halfway through. I got to that really hard. Like, Wait, you never planet beat with the, the witches. Fallen Order? I've I've not beaten Fallen Order. No, I got stuck on a fucking map. I couldn't I couldn't figure it out, dude. I'm lost. Oh I'm my god, lost. dude, you, the game like, is I've so like good. Somehow, Did you, dude? I've I've like somehow backtracked like halfway through an island. I'm I, I'm completely lost, dude. I was stuck for hours. I finally just gave How up. How far did you get? It, I don't know. I'm on the ice planet where you're like sliding down the okay, ice. Okay, okay. So like, you saw him like with his master as a kid and everything. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I saw all that. that was... I saw all that. But I just, I, I've not beaten the game. I got really stuck, and the war- life just got crazy, and we did the podcast, and I just haven't gotten back yeah, to it. it's a great game. But anyway, it's hard to go from playing um, Fallen Order. Mm-hmm. Jesus, I already almost forgot the name. <laughs> it's hard to go from playing that, which we did, where yeah, every bro. planet that you visit, <laughs> <laughs> every planet that you visit is so over the top mm-hmm. with the theming and the environment and the creatures and the enemies to then go to this where it's the middle of the day and nobody has like a weird accent or a weird look like it's a regular guy with a very american sound mm-hmm. to him or a regular girl with a very normal kind of voice no accent um and you're not used to that so much everybody has kind of a quirk in the original tw- trilogy and they just don't quite have that here i don't think well and um, it, the video games the movies they all have these like wide sweeping like amazing sets and this show has only shown us over and over and over again small village tiny town like little little impoverished yeah, villages middle of nowhere tiny yeah, town small village tiny town over and over and over when like we there we know there's bigger worlds out there show us these larger worlds that we've seen in the shows and the not to not to harp on it too much because you know the show is doing what it can and it's got its story that it has to follow i'm sure at some point yeah. we'll get there but it's just the the whole time the show has been going on, I keep thinking, like, I like it, but it could be so much more. And I, I think that's what this episode feels yeah, like to me. Yeah, and that's why, I, that's why I go back and forth on whether I, I want them to, like, keep making these miniseries mm-hmm. shows or if I prefer just the big movie format. I definitely like having at least a show going on. Yeah. I don't want them to stop doing The Mandalorian. It's nice to have something weekly that comes out that you can look forward to with a really long format story. I'm all about that. But I don't think it's an adequate replacement for the movies to me mm-hmm. um, as a standalone thing. I want both. As, as I'm just that I'm greedy for sure, but I feel like they're able to create worlds in the movies that they maybe can't do on a week to week basis in Agreed. the TV show. Yeah. Um, but then, I, but then I you say it, that, it but then they have this, they have this incredible like wrapping, you know, like 3D screen that they use to film all of the yeah. shots in the Razor Crest. Which, by the way, rest in peace to the Razor Crest. Damn. I know, dude. It was Damn. obliterated. Um, obliterated seeing him pick up that the spear at the end and 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 seeing boba fett in the armor and saying you know like like you deserve uh, that armor that was my you know it was your father's dude there were good moments in this episode and and it if anything it pushed the story forward now we know like okay obviously you know he's failed at his mission now boba fett and and this girl are gonna help mando uh and like it's going somewhere and, and it's interesting. Yeah, and it's open-ended with who Grogu did or did not communicate with through the forest. We don't know what happened. We don't yet, have yeah. any inkling. Yeah, we have nothing. We have no information on that yet. And he was wrecking those stormtroopers. Like, oh, when he opened yeah. the cell. Yeah, when he opened the cell door, he's like throwing them around. I know, but he's so little, dude. And they put those little cuffs on him. Yeah. Oh. He just had the little baby cuffs on him, dude, and he's like sleeping. I was like, my wife was like almost crying, dude. She was so upset. I was like, oh man, so. Uh, you're right. Big loophole for sure. It leaves a lot to be desired. I, I just overall, yeah, it was dope seeing Boba, and I appreciate that story development. the The episode in and of itself left a lot to be desired for me. Yeah. I was not uh, 
not overly impressed with the set. I thought they could have made a much bigger thing out of the world that they had them on for this episode. Felt really cheap. Like they literally just picked a spot, you know, and, and did set up the little temple there. And that was the whole episode. Mm-hmm. Um, so overall, not not totally blown away by this episode. I, I know it's cool to see Boba, but um, yeah, I don't know. You got anything else for this one, man? I don't. I'm trying to make sure that I'm not missing anything because there was a lot to unpack in this episode. Can you not? Um yeah, I, I don't think so. I, I think I, I'm excited to see where it goes because I'm definitely intrigued. Me too. And and I want to see the next episode because, you know, Grogu is on his own at the moment. He's, you know, he's... That's right. I want to see where this goes. And I'm very, very intrigued. And I'm curious as to why they have a cruiser and not a Star Destroyer. I just, and you know, like, oh, the Empire's back. You know, it, I... I got, I got to, I got to know more. I just, I have to know more. I have to see more. Yeah. It, it they're doing a good job of stringing us along mm-hmm. for sure. They're doing a very good job. Well, the good news is Christopher, we are like four days away at this point from the next episode. So all shall be answered. All should be revealed. I do think we're in for a big episode here coming up for chapter 15. I think chapter, because there's only going to be two more episodes, right? In I this season, so. there's this one. And then the one after this will be the season finale. I think so. I think we're in for something pretty big here, and then I think we're going to be blown away with the season finale. I'm very excited. Baby Grogu is in peril. Uh, the world needs to know what's going to happen Help to us, him. All right, everybody. Help us, Obi-Wan Kenobi. He may. Um, that's it. So, The Mandalorian, Chapter 14, The Tragedy. Oh, I'm sorry. One more thing before we wrap up. Sorry, everybody. I'm, I'm teasing. I'm teasing right now. What do you think that name alludes to? The Tragedy. The Tragedy. <sighs> yeah, this chapter was called The Tragedy. What do you think that's about? I think... It's meant to be sort of like uh, the Mandalorian, you know, Din Djarin kind of failing his mission. I think that's... Okay, so the tragedy being that they got Baby Grogu. Yeah, but it could also be a reference to, uh, you know, Boba Fett's past. Um, it, it, it could be a lot of different things. Um, yeah, or... It could. It could be a reference to what happened when that thing activated. We don't know. We don't know what happened Very in true. his mind when he, when he was on that rock, so... It's very true. It's funny. We, you know, two two weeks ago we were thinking we were going to see Din Djarin and Ahsoka Tano be like the the two main characters. Now it's it's Din and Boba Fett, and uh, and that's who's going through it in the in the Slave One. So really cool episode coming up. I think uh, only two more in this season. So stick around. That's it, guys. That's our review this week, Chapter Fourteen, The Tragedy. Leave a thumbs up, thumbs down if you hated it. Fair is fair. Check out our uh, Instagram critic in the comment man on Instagram. Chris, this is the way. This this is the way. This is the way. All right, guys. We'll see you next week for chapter 15. Will they save baby Grogu? Find out next week oh, on oh, Dragon Ball Z. Also, before <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, really quick, I just have <laughs> to say up? it was really cool. His line when he said, I'm just a man trying to make my way in the universe. That's a callback to the original, uh, you know, in the, I think it was episode two. He says a line very similar to that. Anyways, it was just cool seeing his character get to repeat a line. So, and, yeah. There you go. Boba Fett is back, ladies and gentlemen. Boba Fett is back. All right, guys, we're out of here. Critic in the comment, man. See you next week. Peace.